Yo, what's up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to be going over all of the best weapons for each category in Battlefield 2042 for season seven. Obviously, we've seen a bunch of changes here. Not only have the SMGs seen a bit of a shift because they've gotten a much higher headshot multiplayer that's been increased from, I believe, 1.25 all the way up to 1.55. The headshot multiplier for the assault rifles has been reduced, so they're a little bit weaker now in close range. Not only that, but we've also seen massive changes to the visual recoil, which is going to work with the spread and with the normal recoil of a weapon to change how that weapon feels and handles. So I figured it's about time we get stuck into one of these. Guys, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, hit that subscribe button. Lots more to come on season seven. And over 70% of you guys who watch my videos on the regular are not currently subscribed. So it will be massively appreciated, even if you think you are subscribed, if you can go and just double check for me. As always, guys, thank you so much for the support. So we are gonna begin with the assault rifles here. And my first pick, surprise, surprise, is going to be the AK-5C. Now, this may not be for the reasons you think it is. This weapon on paper isn't the most highest TTK weapon in the game. It's not going to beat out the AM-40 or the VHX or any of those weapons. But it is just a total laser beam. You don't really need any attachments on this gun to help you. And that's why you see me running the suppressor here. There is a heavy barrel. As you guys can see, I've just unlocked this weapon really so I don't have this stuff. The heavy barrel in my eyes isn't worth it. It nerfs your rate of fire by 90 and it only increases your bullet velocity. The velocity of this weapon, as you guys can see as we head over to Sorrow Scribbles, shout out to Sorrow. I will leave a full link to this down in the description. The velocity here with standard ammunition is 845. That is by no means slow, so you really don't need this heavy barrel to give you greater velocity, nor do you need any of the muzzle attachments that better your recoil for the weapon. So really, all you want to go for is a suppressor, and this really pairs nicely with the ammo situation. So the game is actually lying to you here. If you guys notice, the first ammo you unlock is the subsonic ammo, and it says that it reduces the rate of fire by 50 so regular ammo, we've got 670 rate of fire. Subsonic, we have 620. However, we're going to go into the test range here, also created by Bembit, and I will leave a link to this down below. And you guys, I'm going to see if you can hear the difference. So we've got subsonic here. Switch over to standard. Call me crazy, but there is no difference in rate of fire there whatsoever. And if we go back over to Sorrow Scribbles here, we can see the weapon has 675 rate of fire with standard ammunition. And he also says that with subsonic, it has 675. So really, the only detriment you're having by using subsonic ammo with this weapon is that the velocity is a little bit slower. It does drop down here to 675 meters per second, but that is not even SMG territory. That is by no means slow. So essentially, you've got nothing to lose by adding a suppressor and taking the subsonic ammo and disappearing off of the minimap with this gun. Another really nice thing about it is because it is just a total laser beam. And I'm going to demonstrate this for you guys here. You don't need to burst this weapon at all. This guy is at like 55 plus meters. Like, I'm just pulling down against the recoil here, obviously. But you guys can see that the horizontal sway is almost non-existent. Also, you know, vertical recoil. I mean, look at this thing. It's crazy. So that also means you don't have to worry about grips on the underbarrel. And this gun happens to get the master key. So since it only has a rate of fire of around 670, its weakness is close range. But with the master key, obviously on maps like Haven, where you're cleaning out houses and things like that, this thing really comes in handy. So yeah, don't sleep on the AK-5C, guys. It may not be the top dog in terms of TTK. It does have 356 here for fully automatic, which is not that impressive when you consider a lot of weapons like the AM40, but it is incredibly versatile and a lot of fun to use. So what else is good in this patch? Well, the AM40, despite its 900 rate of fire, really doesn't have that much recoil or visual recoil, I should say either. This is my loadout at the moment. I'm going with the Fusion Hollow, Tactical Compensator, the MGL Laser Sight, and then the standard issue Drum Magazine. 
You know, even if we go over here to some longer ranges. It kind of floated away there for a second. It kind of caught me off guard, that sideways horizontal recoil. So, by all means, if you guys do want to use, um, you know, an attachment or a muzzle that reduces the horizontal recoil, you can do that. But if we come back to Sorrow Scribbles, this gun has a 200 millisecond TTK up to 10 meters, 267 up to 29 meters, and 334 up to 49. Absolutely insane. This has always been one of the top tier assault rifles, and in my eyes, it's still one of the best. The VHX here, again, Fusion Hollow, Tactical Compensator, the SL1 laser sight. You can also take some underbarrel grenade launchers if you wish. Definitely want to fill these out here so you have access to everything. And then my choice it will be the standard issue extended, high power, and then subsonic. So this gun has seen a few nerfs of recent. But it's definitely no slouch. I think it's probably at least considered to still be an S-tier assault rifle. So you can really tell at ranges. It really does help you burst firing this weapon, which is why weapons like the AK-5C do have an advantage at those medium to long ranges. You really don't need to burst it at all, whereas these high rate of fire weapons like the VHX and like the AM-40, you definitely do. So I've tested the visual recoil on all of the assault rifles, and it's pretty tame on most of them. Most of the assault rifles in this game are very, very good if you're using the ones from the base game. So M5A3 is still good. The AK-24 is not great. I would probably prefer the S4 over that weapon. The AC-42 has never really been a weapon that I've gotten into because I just don't like burst fire weapons. But it has seen a little bit of a buff to the first, to the dispersion on the very first burst. But it takes a little bit longer to recover from dispersion between bursts. So depending on whether you're somebody who likes this gun or not, it may have seen both a little bit of a buff and a little bit of a nerf at the same time, probably overall more of a nerf. The RM68 has seen nerfs in the past. It was at one point probably the best assault rifle in the game. Now it's still very, very good. I would still consider this to be S tier. The GEW is okay. This is like an A tier weapon. And then as we come down to all of the vault weapons, and this pretty much goes for every single category in the game, the vault weapons in general are just simply flat out worse than the all-out warfare weapons that were released either with the base game or with any of the seasons. There are maybe some outliers in certain situations, but if you're a new player and you're wondering which weapons are best, if you see this little sign that says BF3 Vault Weapon, or some of them say Bad Company 2 Vault Weapon, it's probably not going to be as good as the non-Vault Weapons. Moving over to the SMGs then. So, the PP29, it has to be said, it's still the king. It has seen a little bit of a nerf to its bullet velocity, it didn't really make much of a difference. So fusion hollow sight here, tactical compensator, standard issue ammunition with high powered and subsonic in reserve. That's what I use. Let's just go and check the TTK of this real quick. And you guys are gonna see why it's probably, in my opinion, the best SMG in the game. 245 milliseconds up to 29 meters and only 327 up to 49 meters. That's pretty insane. But I think the biggest thing for me is that it comes with a 64 round magazine. It's basically a pocket LMG. It's incredibly accurate because of the slower rate of fire. You really cannot beat this weapon. Um, there's a reason that you will see pro players such as Focus, I've noticed. He pretty much uses this weapon exclusively all the time. So it's been pretty much the best weapon in the game since the game came out. And I would say it is arguably still the best weapon in the game. However, there are definitely a lot of other great SMGs to go for here. The PBX, definitely S tier as well. The MP9, maybe just a smidge behind the PBX, but still very, very good. The K30 has actually seen some really nice changes. So they've actually increased the movement speed while you're ADSing by 10%. And, you know, this weapon also has a very, very high uh, TTK here. If we go and check Sorrow Scribbles, 245 up to 29 meters, 294 up to 49 meters, or between 30 and 49 meters. Absolutely crazy TTKs there. And one of the nicest things about it is it has this very unique red dot sight. Now, this is only for a specific skin. I can't quite recall if you can purchase this skin on the store or if it's out of the battle pass. It must be from the battle pass because I've never bought any skin on the store here but as you notice you don't have that top iron bar around the red dot sight so it really improves your visibility with this weapon 
The AC9, I would say, is an okay SMG. I don't think it's quite as good as the K30, and it much fulfills the same role. So if you're going to pick one, I would say go with the K30. The SCZ3. Let's take a look at the attachments here. So I'm running the Tactical Compensator for this one, Fusion Hollow Sight, and then Standard Issue Drum Magazine with the High Power Drum in reserve. You can go for the High Power Drum as your first choice if you want here, but I find that it just doesn't really improve the TTK all too much. So if you go and take a look at the 0 to 29 meters category here for the standard ammunition, the TTK is actually 267. For high power, it's 312 but it's up to 49 meters, whereas 30 to 49 meters with standard is 333, which is a little bit slower. So basically, standard ammunition is actually faster to kill, up to 29 meters, but high powered is a little bit quicker than between 30 and 49 meters. And then 50 to 74, high powered, 390, so it's again a little smidge faster. So they're kind of leapfrogging each other in terms of TDK, but overall, I think standard ammunition is the way. So. There's nothing really wrong with this weapon. It's fairly accurate. It doesn't have too much recoil. It doesn't have too much visual recoil either. But it's still, you know, it's not really going to win any awards. I mean, we've just taken a look at the TTK and it doesn't have any TTK values in the 200s like the PP29 does, for example. So it's definitely not the top tier SMG in the game. It's certainly no slouch. So let's call it an A tier weapon rather than an S tier weapon. Now these three weapons here, the P90, the AKS-74U and the PP2000, all of these have seen some buffs, whether it be to their bullet velocity or their ADS movement speed. They've seen a few little tweaks and I have messed around with them, but they still just don't seem that good. And furthermore, the visual recoil when you're ADSing, it, it's not very nice, is it guys? It's a little bit shaky. And you guys are going to see once we go for the AKS-74U that it's it's even worse. I mean, again, there's nothing really necessarily wrong with the PP, uh, sorry, with the P90, but it just isn't as good as a lot of the competition. The AKS-74U here doesn't really have the best TTK, and I know I've got the Cobra sight on here because they don't have uh, the Fusion Hollow sight, the new one that they added to the game unlocked yet, but... You can really see that thing bouncing around from the visual recoil, so it certainly feels like the Vault weapons in general have just got treated much more harshly with visual recoil than a lot of the base weapons in the game. So if we go take a look at what Soro's written here, uh, the TTK on paper looks pretty good for all these weapons, so 267 here up to 29 meters for the P90, but as he writes here, all good and needed changes, but the visual recoil gives me a headache on this one. The AKS-74U, Finally out of the dungeons, but the ADS accuracy could still need a buff. And that is kind of the thing. The On paper, these weapons have a pretty decent PP2000 here as well, TTK. But they just fall short in terms of spread, in terms of recoil, accuracy, visual recoil. Pretty much everything when compared to their competitors. Okay, moving on to the LMGs. My top pick, and I would say probably this weapon is ahead of all of the rest of the LMGs by a good margin here is going to be the LCMG. Short barrel, fusion hollow, LWG grip, and then standard issue extended. This gun is just such a good all-rounder. It's got an RPM of somewhere around 700 or so. The spread's not crazy. The visual recoil is tame. It's just a delight to use this weapon, and it's got 200 rounds. You can see in the green, the standard ammunition, 290 TTK up to 29 meters is very, very good for an LMG there. And it only goes up to 387 between 30 and 99. So it's definitely able to compete with a lot of the SMGs and a lot of the assault rifles in the game. Obviously, it's going to have the other drawbacks like longer draw time and all of that stuff. But this weapon was and still is the top dog LMG. The other special mention I want to give here is the Avances. The Avances is pretty decent. So again, here I run the Fusion Hollow Sight, Tactical Compensator, LWG Grip, and Standard Issue Extended. It's not bad, this weapon. One thing I will say is if you watch yesterday's video, don't use it with the Iron Sight. Unfortunately, I don't have it equipped here. But uh, if you guys go watch yesterday's video, you'll see uh, just why you don't want to do that. It is currently broken, although I hear DICE are fixing it next Tuesday. So yeah, I don't really have anything bad to say about the advances. It's a pretty good weapon. But again, if we come and look at the TTK, 
it's only 312, right? So it's not quite as good as the LCMG, and I don't really see why you would use this weapon over the LCMG when the LCMG is objectively a better weapon. So the other two base game LMGs we have are the PKP BP and the RPT-31. I feel like the PKP is still just too unwieldy. The recoil is crazy. It's got a lot of spread on it. It's got a lot of visual recoil. It just isn't worth using for the extra rate of fire over the LCMG. And if you look at it on paper, yeah, it's got a 267 TTK up to 29 meters. But what you have to remember about TTK is it's under the best possible situation. This is assuming you hit every single one of your shots and obviously taking spread into account, taking recoil and visual recoil into account, that's not necessarily always going to be the case. The RPT-31, probably the weakest of the bunch. It's not too far behind. I'd still say, like if we say the LCMG is S tier, advances is A tier, you know, the PKP and the RPT, the RPT is maybe A tier as well, to be honest, maybe B tier. All of the vault weapons here, I'm still not a fan of them. I still feel like they just have too much spread, recoil, visual recoil for them to be competitive with the other weapons here above. Moving over to the DMRs, don't bother using the M39 EMR. It's been ruined at the moment by visual recoil. Same thing goes for the G428. And really in general, the DMRs have been hit very hard by the visual recoil changes. I know DICE are working on patch 7.1 at the moment and there are going to be some changes to certain weapons regarding visual recoil so maybe stay tuned but the bsvm is probably the best one to go for here what they were trying to do is make a sort of mashup of a dmr and an assault rifle at the same time so i like to go with the shortened barrel here uh, the k8 hollow sight because you can't get the fusion hollow otherwise i will be taking that the lwg group and then i take high powered extended subsonic high powered extended and then close combat so a really really nice weapon this weapon has probably been one of the best dmrs if not the best dmr in the game and it probably still is sniper rifles i've never really been much of a sniper but my go-to is the sws10 it's the first one you unlock so for that one i take six times scope extended barrel um, the laser sight, standard issue, extended. I also do like to have the close combat ammo and a fusion hollow sight with a short barrel because that drastically changes the weapon. I used to like flicking onto that loadout as a sort of CQB, try to, you know, one-shot people in the chest, but then they nerfed uh, the one-shot range for this gun quite significantly, whereby now you have to headshot them. So I don't use that too much, but it's maybe still worth having it equipped. I prefer the SWS over the DXR1. These weapons are not too dissimilar, to be honest with you. The only other one that's really worth talking about, I would say, is the NTW-50, which, of course, is a one-shot kill in the body up to 100 meters. And finally, we have the shotguns or the utility weapons, I guess you could say. And here we have the MCS. So we've got fusion hollow sight, factory barrel, laser sight, and then the number four buckshot is the way to go for this weapon. This thing did see some significant nerfs when Redacted came out in Season 6 and everybody was running around using this weapon. But as you can see, it's really not too bad. It one-shots people at pretty good ranges here. So if you're going to run a shotgun, I would definitely say the MCS is the best one in the game currently. The other two shotguns here, the 12M Auto. The 12M Auto is still a disgusting shotgun. But you blow your load, so to speak, a little bit too quickly and then you just die with it. Whereas the MCS, you can definitely take down way more people than you can with the 12M Auto. Same thing goes with the MVK. You just use your ammunition up way too quickly. It doesn't do as much damage per shot as the MCS. And so you end up spending more time reloading the weapon than you do actually shooting with it. The GVT, I originally got excited about because I thought they'd increased the damage for it. And as you can see on Sorrow's Scribbles, this is straight from the patch notes here. So they increase the damage only for the AP ammo, though, up to 60 per shot. So, okay, I don't know what this gun needs, but it needs something. I sincerely agree. This gun is just probably one of the worst in the game. The crossbow, I mean, obviously, it's a bit of a meme. You just take this weapon if you want to screw around, pretty much. The Roche Mark IV, also a very, very good sniper. I wouldn't really recommend using the full auto or the burst modes. In close, it's really not going to be able to trump some of the better assault rifles or SMGs in the game. But for long-range sniping, this thing is still, I would say, pretty broken just because of the bullet travel time, which is almost non-existent. 
So there we have it guys, that is a rundown of all of the weapons currently in Season 7. Obviously as things change and progress and DICE makes new changes to them in 7.1, I will update you guys if there's anything major there, I'll certainly be going over the patch notes if nothing else. But yeah, I hope this helped some of you guys out, if it did, leave a like below, don't forget to subscribe for more Battlefield 2042 content, and I will see you guys in the next one.